Why Sid Kagano is the most OP Isekai protagonist in Eminence and Shadow, Sid's power explained by any news. Let's see what he has to say. We've ever talked about. Out of all the Isekai protagonists. Wait, 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 wait. We have now for me, Tateno Yusha. We have the goat Kazuma himself, Konosuba. Hajime from Arifurata that we're watching right now. This is Overlord stuff. This is, I think, Tanya. We haven't watched this yet. And this is another anime that we're gonna watch soon. ReZero, right? This is the main character, ReZero, right? And I have no idea who this guy is. No clue. But maybe this is another anime you guys wanna watch together. Ever talked about? Sid Kagano might just be the most overpowered Why? of all of them. Why? That doesn't necessarily mean he's the strongest in terms of overall power, but when it comes to what constitutes an overpowered character, Sid takes it to the limit, then goes even further past it. Okay. He has a certain trait that most, if not all, other isekai protagonists- I just realized, Aninius, Aninius included them- All uh, other isekai- Aninius included Rimuru in this panel right here. That most- But he didn't include him in the original scene. <laughs> if not all other I guess Rimuru is not part of the gang. Isekai protagonists don't even come close to having. And it's that aspect that I feel differentiates him as the most overpowered protagonist in an isekai. This is, diff this is a very dangerous thing to say, because when you make claims like this, the most overpowered protagonist, like as soon as I make this title, remember, I just copied and pasted his title onto my schedule stream. People are in the offline chat saying, actually, Sid isn't the strongest, actually, it's Ainz. And I'm like, oh, God, I don't know, man. I'm, I, this is just the title of the video. It's not my, it's not my opinion. So, as I go over what that is using details left out from the novels, hopefully I can convey why it is Sid's overwhelming shows of power are fundamentally different from everyone why? else's. Why? It's because they're comical. The motherfucker explains that, you know, in order to defeat a nuclear bomb, I must simply become atomic. And it's like, what the fuck are you even talking? What are you talking about? But first, do you like Chainsaw Man? Raid Shadow Legends. Use the coupon discount code hashtag Kaka for your Raid Shadow Legends. That's right. And back to the scheduled video. Let's see. The video. To be overpowered means to overcome with superior strength. It doesn't necessarily have to refer to a person's absolute max potential, but mm -hmm. can instead relate to that person's ability Mundane to man. overwhelm someone. Mundane man did not even use his sword against Iris. Iris mid -ger. Emphasis on mid. So, when I say that Sid is the most overpowered, I'm not talking about how strong he is relative to other characters from different isekai, but what? instead the scale at which he overwhelms his opponents in battle. Okay, so the definition of the most overpowered has changed. In the beginning, and he's baited you guys with this with this infographic, right, of showing you all these different characters, out of all right? The isekai <laughs> <laughs> kind of baits you things, kind of thinking he's better than all these people. No, that's not what he's saying. Any news is saying, no, 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 no. Definition of the most OP is relative to the other characters in his own series. The gap between how much he bodies everyone, that is what defines the most overpowered in this context. I'm talking about his ability to defeat them in such a one crowbar manner that to crowbar the battle would be an insult to what truly constitutes one. Now. I'm sure some of you are thinking Rimuru. how Ainz and Rimuru tend to- Yeah, Rimuru fucking bodied people, man. ...to do the same, but the core of what makes them so overwhelmingly strong is- Overlord spoilers! ...different from what makes Sid so strong. Why? What's yes, different? Yes, all three of these characters do have magic and abilities incomparable to anyone else in their universe, but for Ainz and Rimuru, that's just- Megido. ...about all they have. They're overpowered because their magic build and stats allow them to be. Okay. Take away Ainz's hundreds of spells and- Fuck! Overlord spoil- we're, go we're gonna watch Overlord soon in this channel too, okay? But this is kind of spoiling. His pay-to-win equipment, or Rimuru's ultimate abilities and his innate traits as a slime, and what you're left with are two average salarymen who wouldn't survive in a fight otherwise. <laughs> the average fucking Isaka character, just the salaryman or just the fucking neats. When it comes to someone like Sid, though, even without his magic and the equipment that stems from it, his immense knowledge of combat and mastery over every single aspect of it makes him a daunting opponent even before he was Isekai. The stylish band of Slayer, he did go into terms of all these different mechanics and like explaining why the crowbar is like a good weapon to use. He did know all these different knowledge. I think that's very overlooked, but he is a fucking nerd, man. He knows all this shit. He applies this additional element of experience Mundane man. on top of all the other things that the likes of Crazy magic, powerful skills, genius tactics, vulnerable, venerable leadership, unparalleled leadership. 
I don't know. I just feel like this part, he shows no leadership, but the girls just like misunderstand him, and that is the leadership. Finds and Rimuru possess as well. Making for this overpowered character who not only defeats enemies with overwhelming magic, but also with an understanding of combat so refined that even the most experienced fighter could be defeated with feints alone. Now, I don't expect you to understand what I'm saying right away, so I'm following. allow me to explain I'm following. just how in-depth Sid's sense for battle goes. A deeper look into this ex- The flash step, bro. This is not a This is a frame step. The cameraman couldn't compete. Watch. The feet's about to move. The cameraman can't even- the cameraman lost them. Extra layer of power oh, oh, oh. that's unique to him and <laughs> That's probably one of my most viewed clips on TikTok of, of the fucking flash step. And people shit on that TikTok of me. The comments are all like, bro's reaction was just as fast as, um, uh, what's, what's her name right now? Ant, Auntie, right? Uh, uh, fucking Beatrice. I'm like, bro, come on. It's not my fault. Even the cameraman was slow. Sure, his opponents are defeated in the most absolute way possible. Then hopefully after you'll acknowledge just a little. The Xenon Griffey fight, dude, this fight. This is the moment where Sid dropped his sword. He realized that Xenon took the pills to awaken, and he was talking about the Almighty. Sid got pissed off because you're like, really? You're going to talk about the Almighty? Drops the sword, he smacks him around. This is barehanded combat at this point. A little bit of what I'm talking about. Best episode, episode Starting 5, so good. Sid had Isekai'd him. Kind of looks like Claire. This is the main girl. In episode one, that I thought would be like the main girl of this series, but she was just a random mobber. Now she just looks like Claire here. Just the red eyes, black hair, you know? Himself, his passion to become stronger had led him to practice. You see this behind the caption right here? Right here. You see this right here? Even here, he's training, bro. This pretty much the grip right here, he's, even here, he's training. Every form of combat. From karate to boxing and swordplay to mixed martial arts, Sid engrossed himself in any. <laughs> This is a fake panel, right? No shot! This is real from the manga. Right? Is it? Or is this his imagination? This, is this his imagination of what he thinks he looks like in the manga? That's him in the... What? So he really was that swole in the, in the manga? This is his human base form? That we didn't see in the anime? No shot. Bro's looking like a Baki character, what the fuck? And everything that would make him more powerful. That didn't mean he had become the greatest martial artist in the world, but if he kept training the way he did, then Sid definitely knew it was in the realm of possibility. Fast forward now to when Sid is 10 years old in the New World, and a clear disparity is noticed between his fighting style and the ones more common here. Clear. See, with so the strong. ones he'd learned being a refined mix of the best humanity could come up with, it was only natural the more independent styles of each kingdom seem, well, mm -hmm. rough. Since he'd spent years learning a style of fighting where movement was minimized and the best of each combat- Yeah, it's just like min-max, the most efficient way, like no waste of movement, it's so simple. That's the, that's the basis of his swordsmanship. Simple, basic movements that are just refined and optimized such that there's no wasted movements. People might think it's boring, but it's optimized. It was combined to create the perfect fight. Sid could easily choose what was best for just about any situation. Hasako, you're right. We could try manga reactions live on stream or even YouTube content of already covered material. I could do... Yes, that's a good idea, actually. On the other hand... With this new world's fighting techniques staying with the countries of origin, no, the no, different no, no, no. schools of combat haven't yet merged into their optimal versions of themselves. Secret skills and hidden techniques are <sighs> locked away within the jurisdiction of the country so that cool. created them, resulting in the inability for any person to refine and improve on what was taught to them. So, with Sid being in- I, I, I gotta say this, I gotta say this. I don't think a lot of people appreciated this episode. I don't think- Themselves. This episode Secrets. was more hype to me. The Oriana turning around like this, her eyes like changing. Like this episode was just as hype to me as like an I Am Atomic episode. Oriana receiving the powers from Shadow. Shadow like having like a cool monologue of like, "Do you desire power?" Right? And Oriana's like, "Yes." And that transfer of power scene was so hype to me. One of my favorite episodes for sure. And just Sid just playing the fucking piano in the underground like. Just, where even are they? The suits? Like, how did you get the piano in there? To refine and improve on what was taught to them. 
So, with Sid being in possession of this pre-existing skill set, that already puts him at an advantage over everyone else in the world. Okay. Combine that with the existence of magic, and Goldie. that small advantage turns into something completely different. Goldie! Like being that okay, you know what? I shit on Goldie a lot, you know? Goldie and Quinton are pretty much skill and Poe timeskip, but... Look at this shit, I mean... We're comparing Goldie against Mundane Man. It's not fair. Goldie, I'm sure he can hold up his own, right? Look at this shit. He's got like a light dragon thing going on with his cool sword and his pay to win armor that looks like fucking Koki from, a hot, from a Arifureta, but <laughs> battle power. <laughs> I like Goldie. He's funny to me. Reason being that magic completely changes the baseline of a person's physical performance. Okay. Like, if he can now lift someone up with a single hand. Is that alpha right now he's tossing? And via magic, then everything <laughs> he knows about close quarters combat is completely useless. It'd be like trying to fight a gorilla as a regular Panda! human. Say Panda versus Mechamaru. Hey yo. Gorilla hey, as hey, a hey, regular hey, human. Hey, hey, yo, hey, yo. Say he's actually not that jacked here. And then again, he's like a kid here. He was pinned in a mounted grapple, then he could simply flex. <laughs> I see anime panels of this a lot. <laughs> what is this? What is the shit? ...his abs to fly through the air. If his foot was caught during an attack, then a slight activation of his leg muscles would send Blue luck. flying. These were just a couple of the many new options that... Aurora! ...considered now that magic was added to the mix. I'm so glad that Aurora came back with, like, Claire. I, I was so sad in last season when we just left Aurora, because she was pure waifu content. And then she just disappeared, and it was discovered that she is the real Diablos. That's like, oh man, well, are we never gonna see her again? Nah, she's back. But as our sister, bro, it's so good. More importantly than that, though, the speed and distance at which a person would step into their attacks was completely different and harder to predict now. It was the hardest thing that Sid had to get used to. The distance? Since martial arts was all about reading your opponent, knowing their range was of the utmost importance. It meant understanding the angle, position, and distance of their he is going so... He's being very meticulous and intricate with, like, explaining how, like, positioning and understanding the distance based off of how he used to fight before and now he has to change with the existence of magic and shit. Like, this is so... nerdy, but I love it. It's going... It's such the... He's going in such in-depth detail, man. ...attacks, which in turn allowed him to optimize his own. With those three aspects being everything, APD. as soon as they were understood at its fullest, it didn't matter whether the person attacking was 5 or 100 meters away. Sid could now determine the exact point to stand, which would allow him to both react to an attack and land a blow right after. The positioning is something we overlook. position defined by a single millimeter. Combine that with an adjustment to the angle of This fight, man. I, I still have episode 5 that I refer back to sometimes. Sometimes I just watch this fight scene. Because it's just a pure demonstration of power. Then I'm being like, ha ha ha! I am a future member of the rounds. I'm an important member. <laughs> and Sid just bots him. And Shadow's like, hmm. Where's the future member of rounds? It's so good in the soundtrack that plays, bro. And then in the lead up to the I'm Atomic, it's his so hits, good. Along with a slight turn to the position of his stance end, those would all be crucial differences, creating advantages for him and disadvantages for his opponent. It was all about creating opportunities through the narrowest of margins. Not jumping in 16 feet, then dashing 19 back. Goldie getting flamed so hard here, but that's true. What was the whole point of that, Goldie? You fucking just wasted all that movement. That was how Sid viewed combat, and he would quickly remaster it even with the addition of magic. Now, that's not to say Sid valued technique over strength, because if he was forced to choose between one or the Strength or technique, what would you choose? Overwhelming strength would just brute force any type of technique. The other than 10 times out of 10, Sid would yeah. always choose strength. Reason being that he firmly believed advanced tactics without the power to back them up was useless. And this goes to I'm Atomic. It's like, sure, you can have all these advanced technique all you want, but at the end of the day, if you're going to head to head clash with a nuclear bomb, what kind of technique is going to counter a nuclear bomb? You need, to, this is comparing like an elephant with a bunch of ants. No, you don't need more ants. You need another elephant. You need something to rival that brute force. When confronted with strategies that relied solely on power, speed, or reaction time though, those were the ones that... 
he thinks he's him right here, bro. He's like, uh, I am the fifth awakened or some shit. <laughs> Does this. And then Shadow just like, all right, let me just draw my fucking sword. Slap you around a little bit. Give you a speech about how I need to become atomic. And I'm going to make you atomic. Sid hated the most. They completely disregarded the very subtleties of battle that made them so amazing in the first place. So, as Sid himself likes to put it, strength was natural, but mastery required effort. And it's those words that I believe lie at the core of what differentiates Sid from every other overpowered isekai protagonist. Sure, Ainz and- Hold up, I think I missed an important line here. Strength's a good, good line. Strength was natural, but mastery required effort. Strength is natural, but mastery requires effort. Sid has a lot of these cool lines, even in the last reaction video we did, right? I, th I think it was something about how instinct, uh, sorry, instinct is like wasted on, intelligence is wasted on dumb people, but dumb pe- How did the line go again? There's some really cool one-liners like this, where I read this and this shit's like so profound. And it's those words that I believe lie at the core of- I wonder if he even understands what he's saying, or if he's just saying this shit because it's tuny and it just sounds so profound. He's like, oh, that sounds so cool, I'm just gonna say it. What differentiates Sid from every other overpowered isekai protagonist. Sure, Ainz and Rimuru and Hajime may have mastered the use of their own skills and magic, but Sid has mastered all that, plus the art of combat. You see, hmm. to him, skill and expertise are pretty much everything. Especially in piano. He allows his techniques to bolster his strength, uses his ingenuity to dictate his speed, then his reaction time allows him to scope out potential attacks. They're all aspects that remain independent from the physicality a lot of the others seem to rely on. And though that is definitely important, Sid would never screw up a fight by relying solely on that or any of the other aspects. For example, let's take a look at how he approached his fight with Greece. Who? This is episode two, right? I forgot about this shit, but we actually fought this guy. Holy shit, I forgot. Instincts is wasted on idiots. Intelligence is useless without instinct. Yes, that's the one. First, Sid walked forward and waited for Greece to take a swing at him. As soon as that move was made, not only was Sid made aware of his current range, but Reaction that time. was Positioning. quantity of magic to be used to speed himself up. He would focus the tiniest bit of magic into his feet, compress it till the time of release, then... This is all like light knowledge shit, right? Like, no way the average anime only person would have ever comprehended what Sid was doing here. We were just thinking, wow, strong kid moves fast. He used its explosive impact to make himself faster. So, while Grease's sword was slicing past a target no longer there, Sid was placing himself within range for his own attacks. A slight sh- Okay, I thought the caption here said, ZA SLICE, but no, ZA is like the slice sound. I thought he said ZA SLICE unintentionally. Shipped in position. Like, like a chuny sound effect or something. Position ...that required minimal effort, yet still provided him with all the advantage. When Sid went to initiate his own attack next, he didn't use magic to make himself faster as their difference in speed no longer mattered anymore. Since he was now on the offensive, Grease- Look at that clean swing, dude. So simple, so elegant. ...had no choice but to move in response to it, which to Sid indicated he could no longer attack anymore. One oh. more step forward and Sid would now put and both you're done. parties in a position too awkward for either to attack, leading Grease to step backward just like how Sid had anticipated. <laughs> Imagine you're Zen on Gurphy, dude, and you see this shit, you just fucking collapse to your knees, bro. Look at this shit, like, what's about to happen, bro? What's about to happen to me? <laughs> Even if he didn't, though, just reading the shift in Grease's magical energy was enough to indicate that he was heading there. So, this time Sid had manipulated the battle by using his own position to affect his opponents, once again creating a clean opportunity for him to strike without any risk to himself. Now, I he know just slaps really those swords away. The best opponent to highlight an overwhelming difference in power, but Zenon Griffey, come on, Zenon Griffey. As the first instance where we get to see how Sid fights, it sets the foundation for how battle is perceived by him. It isn't just this competition to see who's stronger, but instead a dance of tactics in which one must overcome the other. And like the crazy shit is like I never understood that. Like I don't think any anime only could ever understand that. We just see OP character doing OP cool shit, and we just pop off, but hell no, we're thinking about like, oh, look at the way that he uses magic for a burst there in his feet to make his precise movement, to make his positioning perfect so that he could react to this and encounter this opponent, and, and it's like all that shit, no fucking way! I'm just watching this shit and going, hoo hoo hoo, when's the next I'm a tonic scene? Grease was definitely stronger than Sid was here, but because Sid understood exactly what was happening, 
Grease could only feel as if he was getting toyed with. He literally felt he was being overpowered, much to the point that he knew he could only wait and accept his death. Now, the battle that truly highlights this fundamental difference in his approach to combat Iris is fight? that one-sided fight against the Witch of Calamity. Aurora. The literal strongest woman in record. This fight was Aurora using a shitload of blood magic and there was like blood things going everywhere and then Sid was just like carefully dodging everything. That's what I remember from this battle. Recorded history who Sid beat just as easily as he did with everyone else. What makes this fight yeah, he just rang around the just... others though is that in this one he actually had to try a little bit. Ooh. Not in the sense of relying more on his magic and his OP gotcha. abilities, but rather through greater insight into what his opponent was capable of. It's an in-depth analysis. <laughs> Fucking Quentin, bro. I hated Quentin back here. I was shooting on Quentin a lot, but now I actually like him. Says that he likes to refer to as a conversation. Whenever Sid finds himself facing a worthy opponent, Beatrice. he likes to treat the battle as this different type of form for it. Oh? You see, every little thing from a shift in gaze to the position of the feet were all tells that indicated something about the opponent he was facing. They were these tiny cues that each held a very specific meaning. So, like, even just, like, the way that they move... The slight positioning they do during the combat. This is like little cues that Sid will then understand, understand that, oh, this is like a worthy opponent. They seem to know what they're doing because they have an understanding of technique in the form of positioning, mastery of their skills, I don't know, potential reaction time from how they position themselves. And it's like, oh, you're worthy. Then I'll have like a conversation, a, a duel of blade, a conversation with the blade through a duel. Meaning to it. So the more of these little things he observed, the more. That angle, bro that angle so <laughs> what's, what's going on over here what's going on over here no close in the more of these little remember why he was disappointed against olivier i don't remember who olivier is <laughs> things he observed the more meanings he could uh, um olivier was alpha's uh, the clone right the hero olivier right 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 it, it was like alpha clone right I think? Determined from them meant that in turn would lead to figuring out how best to deal with them. It was the very core essence of what fighting was all about to him. Only the most skilled in combat could perceive purpose in the smallest of actions, then use that knowledge to prepare a superior response to it. So, by thinking of it as a conversation, each person's- So the superior response to this is breaking his neck, and also coughing, Communication sneezing. skills would be their ability to read their opponent. The stronger your communication skills were, the further ahead you could anticipate, and that in turn would allow you to respond accordingly. If the other person- Olivier, right here. This is Olivier. Right here. Communication skills were just as strong- There she is. Then they too could do the same and anticipate prior to your follow through and then react to it, resulting in this endless back and forth exchange in which the conversation continues until one person's dialogue becomes too much for the other. Or until one person gets anatomicked. On the other hand, if an opponent's conversational skills were lacking much like how many of them do, a dialogue would never even get started. Come on! you telling me Goldie wasn't good enough to even have a dialogue? What do you mean? Goldie was sizing him up! Monday man going, oh, his power levels. It would just end up in one party acting on impulse until the fight ended, which to Sid couldn't even be considered a conversation. That's kind of true. The other fights where Sid was actually having a conversation, there was some cool shit happening, Sid was like respecting them, and the fight was more prolonged. But these different fights with these random fodders, it is the fodders just like going, WITNESS MY ULTIMATE SKILL! And it's like, Sid's like, bonk, and then they just die, right? That's true. It is, it's not even the conversation, it's just one-sided. To him, that was no different than trying to- This is the AI rock, paper, scissors video. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but it's actually pretty decent to watch, yeah? And the fight with a game of rock, paper, scissors. Pretty fun. So, whenever Sid was faced with an opponent, Holy every shit. time he would go in trying to start this conversation, but every time until now he would always be met with silence. It's almost like some kind of one-punch mess, Saitama shit, where Saitama wants to find a, a worthy opponent that gets, doesn't get defeated in one punch. He's just so desperate for that. Now this is like Sid or Shadow looking for like a worthy opponent where he can have like a conversation with, but everyone is so fucking weak and useless, he can't even have a conversation. His opponents would always go in trying to win on impulse, resulting in a far cry from the true type of battle he'd always- Even Anarose wasn't enough to have a conversation with? ...always been yearning for. When he does have the chance to have this conversation though, that's when we get to see just how far this gap in skill and experience truly takes him. So, first he starts with observation, 
Initially okay. by simply staring to find those first subtle meanings then. Yeah, subtle meanings like the nice little mole right there, right? Little beauty mark right here. That's what I'm observing right now. Oh, Aurora in the manga looking real nice. Those first also, in the fucking anime, in the manga, he actually wears his mask, huh? He actually wears like an eye mask to at least hover that. Because like, how the fuck is this hood? You can't tell me his identity is just hidden from just wearing the hood, dude. But it's like, the anime is like aware of it. It's like, yeah, we know. It just looks cool. Just subtle meanings then, following it up by granting the initiative to judge speed, mobility, and destructive capacity. It's a step that usually takes less time the stronger your communication skills were. Once that observation was complete, the next step was to refine his movements. And this typically involved removing unnecessary motion when dodging. Like, if he could turn full steps into half steps and two moves into one, then- Like, this is such minute detail that you would never even think about. Him just, like, dodging. But even, like, full steps into half steps to optimize. No wasted movements. Optimize for the dodging. That would directly result in a window in which a counterattack could be made. You see, the less time spent moving to dodge meant more time for a counterattack, bringing us to the third step in which the first two were creating an opening for. Oh, barehanded sure, combat! Sid could have evaded Aurora forever, but doing that would never lead to victory. No, his dodges needed to be refined so that he could create space for a counterattack. The dodges are done so that you can make a counterattack happen. Okay. And that was the essence of the conversation he was. Understand, size the opponent up, look at their bus size, start dodging all that shit, make room for counterattack, then it's having. It was actually noted perfectly through the observations of Alexia. She was the first to understand exactly what Shadow was doing here. Alexia also did make note of Shadow's uh, swordsmanship and how it was so simple and refined that she even, like, re it resembled her own style, right? That's where she didn't lose motivation and she was like, I'll continue with my basic normie style because... It is optimized. Not, it might not be fancy and cool and flashy, but it's optimized. Now, for someone as skilled as Sid, the outcome of this battle was made certain all the way back at step one. His initial observations showed Aurora wasn't as skilled at communicating as him. So, by the time the first move was even made... That is so cool. Look at this animation, bro. Look at the way... What is, why is this the most... Okay, this is Alexia's line. Wow, this got a lot of views in their retention graph. But look at the Aurora animation here. Get step one. This goes like this. His initial observations showed Aurora wasn't as. She just goes like this. As him. So, but that's so cool. Uh, you get to see uh, all these different blood strands like go like this. Boom, 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 boom. This is the same type of animation that happens whenever Alpha shows up. You see a single strand of blonde hair, then a bunch of more blonde hair just in succession like this. Was even made. Both seemed to understand it was only a matter of time until the battle would be decided by him. Now, despite it being so one-sided, Manga Aurora looks real nice, dude. I believe this to be the best fight that highlights that fundamental difference I've been talking about. I mean, Sid definitely could have used any number of his OP As light novel? Okay. this right away, but that's never the type of fight that he's trying to go for. Unlike what Ainz, Rimuru, or anyone else does, Sid is always going in trying to start this conversation. He wants to begin this dialogue so he can beat his opponent in the most absolute way possible. And the most absolute way possible was him feigning to use a sword. He never had the blade the entire time. Iris was having delusions. Iris thought that Monday Man had weapons and shit, but no, Monday Man was not even holding a sword. Just by the subtle movements in the far distance, Iris thought that there was some threat with the weapon. No, and it turns out he never had the blade. That's some crazy fucking genjutsu shit, dude. Achieving that perfect victory is all that ever matters to him. Victory to everyone else just means defeating your opponent, but victory to Sid is something completely different. What is victory to Sid? He treats this as a conversation. He wants to find worthy foes so he can have a meaningful conversation. But after doing so, this conversation is... It, the, the only reason this conversation exists is to find the most coolest and optimized way to just like show a demonstration of power, the gap between me and you, and just ultimately, just the best way to shit on you. It's the process of systematically dismantling them yeah. in the most overwhelming way possible. And this is the focal point of the argument of Annie News. What he just said there in the intro of this video, how he says the most OP character in his definition is a character that has overwhelming difference in power, 
and how he overwhelms these different characters relative to the people in that universe, right? Not comparing Sid against like Hajime or Sid against Rimuru. No, no, no. Sid against everyone else in the shadow, uh, in, in this like Eminence and Shadow universe and how he just fundamentally power gaps them in different ways that other Isekai protagonists can't, doesn't do. A precise operation that always ends with him overpowering them both in strength and technique. So, whereas- One more time there, hold up, go back, go back with him overpowering them both okay. in strength and technique. Surprised this part doesn't have much retention graph. You know, if you look at the YouTube bar, you sh I, I thought it'd be like a peak right here, but I guess it's just me, huh? So, so, whereas every other isekai protagonist wins their battles through strength and power, Sith takes it a step above and bolsters all that with technique and ingenuity. Another part to the argument, because it's not that Rimuru and Hajime doesn't also overpower their opponents, but there is this technique ingenuity. The conversation, that doesn't really happen with other characters, huh? He would never solely rely on the magic or skills that came from being isekai No, instead he chooses to rely on himself. His refined experience with combat, which results in this level of overpowering that we only ever see from him. That's the reason I think Sid to be the most OP character out of all of them. Once again, that doesn't mean he's the strongest, but yeah. when it comes to the scale at which he overwhelms his opponent, the other protagonist doesn't even come close. There's no one else who achieves absolute victory and inflicts such hopeless defeat like the way that Sid does. I think at this point, this part can be very subjective. Just because Sid has all this different understanding of technique, doesn't necessarily mean that other characters doesn't. The same. I, I, I understand the argument he's making, but I feel like a lot of the different isekais we see, all these different characters also see is just pit of despair and just at the overwhelming difference in power. But again, it's, it's, it's a little bit more to it than that. I mean, the guy literally beat the hero Olivier without so much as a sword or magic. He, he did do that. beat Anna Rose with perfect spacing. Breaking our neck and sneezing. And terrifying foresight, then humiliated Iris through a series of feints so intimidating she couldn't even move. All of it were just feints. Literal genjutsu shit, he did not even have a sword in hand or he even used it that time. Now, if that doesn't highlight that fundamental gap in combat experience, then I honestly don't- Crowbar against this incredible fire of relic weapon shit. Remember, Iris got this OP sword and motherfuckers still fighting with a crowbar. I don't know what else to tell you. It's his literal life passion to be the most overpowered. But yeah, that's my two cents on what I think of Sid. Whether you happen to think the same or not, I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments. This is a cool scene where Sid's like fainting, like I am strong and I'll move like this really fast against Claire, but then he like, then like, oh, I can't actually do that and he goes into the water. This was honestly just a fun little topic that I wanted to talk about. Nothing that needs to be taken too seriously, I hope. Oh. But with this now done. Dub video by Any News, but not last moment. <laughs> Good, good little thing he said there, because people take titles like this so seriously. When you make a claim like this, right, when you, it's not really a claim, he's just saying why Sid is the most OP character. He's not saying that Sid is, he kind of is, he's explaining why though, and he formulates his argument in a very specific way. He doesn't compare Sid, you know, he doesn't compare Sid with Out of all, all the these different characters. He initially baits you, he initially baits you. But then, it's like, no, actually, it doesn't mean he's actually the strongest. No, 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 it's, it's that relative to the other people in his universe and how Sid has the understanding of technique, this different combat experience, and how he has a dialogue, a conversation, which ultimately leads to him just absolutely humiliating his opponents, showing them absolute despair because of the gap in power. That is what makes Sid the most OP character. But again, this title was very carefully crafted because Eminence and Shadow is obviously trending. If you make a character title like this, then obviously everyone's going to be very angry typing in the comments. You know what that does? Boosts the engagement up, gets more views. Very smart guy. Please check out any news if you haven't. Now, if you're, uh, we do these live streams live 7 a.m. PST every weekday. So I hope to see you guys there. Bye, guys.